name is Sealer Beck, and you rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring the little bell. Ring the little bell so you are notified when new videos drop. So this is a review of, uh, well, I think i show you right here. It's a review of this. Freaking awesome. This freaking, freaking awesome uh, Doctor Who, okay, what would you call it, graphic novel. This is a reprint of the black and white Marvel strips from, what oh, year? Let's say 80s. Uh, do they have the year written in here anywhere? Uh, no. Uh, oh, they first reprinted... Uh, no, just as 63. I don't know. I think, well, 85. Uh, and this is just prime, prime, prime awesome. Absolutely awesome, uh, Doctor Who comics. Uh, John Ridgeway uh, uh, just knocking out the part. This, this is really... I, I think there's three of these books are uh, mainly John Ridgeway. Uh, this one, I think, is the best. Next one is the... Sylvester McCoy went, and after that, they, they go into different answers. Not quite as good. Here, I also got this little convention sketch of John Ridgeway for the Seventh Doctor by John Ridgeway. This was back in the day when they would just do sketches for you, right? They would just go up to the. To, I remember well, Brendan McCarthy at the uh, UK Comic Art Convention. I'm going to say 84, 83, 84. 85, so you know, around the which is where, where I got that. Uh, uh, yeah, his girlfriend was like, Come, we gotta go. He's like, oh, I gotta do my duty and draw. And they were just drawing sketches for all us fans. It was wonderful. Nobody was, nobody was paying them. They were just doing it for the love of it. To, I think to make people love comics, right? Uh, uh, it, yeah, it was just absolutely fantastic. So, anyway, before we get into it, uh, can you hit the like button? That's absolutely, that'd be great. And, uh, and I don't see any reason why you shouldn't like this. This is, this is a video where I'm gonna be quite positive, quite positive, quite happy. Uh, hit the like button, hit the share button, hit the subscribe button. Uh, subscribe, they get me up to 3,100 subscribers. Uh, that would just piss off YouTube, but I don't think they'll come after you for that. Yeah, but it would piss off YouTube. Like, share, subscribe, comment, let me know what you think. Definitely know, let me know what you think about this one, because it's great stuff. It's great stuff. And check out my Indiegogo, two awesome comic books. Not, and I'm good. I love my work, okay? I freaking love my comics. Uh, 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 this is better. <laughs> yeah, this Doctor Go, this is better. This is how, this is the esteem I hold it in. I'm saying, hands down, it's better than my, although this is pretty good. I wrote and drew this, uh, Biblical, Bible Stories, Aces, Creative, Rationalist, Rose, kind of like one of those uh, 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 late 80s, early 90s Vertigo comics. 100, oh, the 220 pages long, and then 105 pages. I wrote this, and Dominic Ratcho did the art. Uh, the Imperium, a love letter to Telly Fancy of the 1960s. I would really kind of like to a uh, uh, Doctor Who comic book of this. So it, it has you know, a Doctor Who like character in it. Uh, uh, basically, uh, imagine James Bond, uh, Doctor Who, Emma Peel, uh, Monkey in a Space Suit, and the Black Star from 2001. A bit of Thunderbirds, uh, a bit of uh, uh, um, The Prisoner, a bit of Callan. Yes, everything I love about the Sixers, all there together. That, and, and, yeah, as represented in one of these extras you get when you buy both books. Leela and the uh, 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 Racco Walsh from the land that time forgot, the time machine, and K9. Why are they together? Doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter at all. Fine, go check it out. Links in the video notes. And comment, let me know what you think. Definitely do comment. Uh, where is it? I think this is... Yeah, there you go. World Shapers. So this is the second of the John, John Ridgway vo uh, volumes. Um... Uh, the the I think they did Peter Davison in one volume and it was mainly uh, Dave Gibbons and then they went on to different I think Steve Dillon was the last one uh, who did it so anyway but they, they, he'd been drawing uh, Doctor Who for quite a while now they just brought Perry in and uh, uh, this I think again this was where, where they, it was just prime prime Doctor Who knocking out the park the who did that cover the, the, yeah the cover illustration is good. <coughs> very good uh, uh, but just not as good as John Ridgway why didn't they just get John Ridgway he's still working I think it's, uh, uh, they had uh, uh, he's doing the Omega comic did they say who did the cover uh, Mike Collins uh, and and, and uh, David Roach uh, yeah listen you know great but they're just not as good as John Ridgway well, I went to they could have got John Ridgway to the cover so we've got a bunch of stories here we have Exodus Revelation Genesis a uh, great story that kind of forgets itself in the middle uh, Nature of the Beast, uh, uh, another uh, yeah, another good good Perry story. Time bomb, clever story. Jamie Delina wrote that. I thought I thought it'd be Grant Morrison. Salad Days. Um, Simon Furman wrote that. Uh, Changes is really cool. Yeah, you see Grant Morrison coming. Uh, Mike uh, Mike Collins wrote Prophets of Doom, which is interesting. The Gift. Uh, 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 Jamie Delina and the and World Sheep is the last uh, the last story. And you do, and you do get these wonderful like makings of. So they got this interview with uh, who are they interviewing? Uh, Long-serving uh, uh, companion uh, for the six seven Doctor Frobisher. 
uh, uh, Frobisher, uh, yeah, met with a variety of comments and criticism. Love Frobisher during his tenure as the Doctor Who. Doctor Who magazine caught up with him. Oh, there's an interview with Frobisher. <laughs> I wonder who wrote this. <laughs> one four, originally in Doctor Who magazine, 148. I have to go look that up. Fine, so the first story again. Just look at the artwork. Look how good the artwork is. But it starts off with this, like, impoverished planet, right? And these people try, trying to escape in this, like, beat-up car. Uh, uh, and, you yeah, know, they're, they're quite enjoying having Perry and, uh, and Frobisher together. And all of a sudden, this, uh, uh, this family ends up in the TARDIS. So they're escaping this impoverished planet. And they say there's like these uh, uh, scientists that are um, that have lots of food and they're being mean to everyone. So the doctor goes and investigates. But yeah, I did. You know, look at the way that they Ridgeway really nails the doctor's character. You know, coming through the door there, it just it feels very it feels very right. It feel, it feels like like it were, he even makes his costume not look bad. It's incredible. So yeah, so they're telling him about about you know everything that happened. And Perry's like, no, you can't just dump. You have to go go and check it out, right? So they do, and they, they go, and uh, and then it goes into this totally different sideband story. They forget about all the, um, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, what was it, aristocrats. Uh, uh, they take you all the food and screw them over, right? Um, but again, just a great bit bit of uh, um, uh, Cyberman, Cyberman action there. Really, really nice. Uh, uh, and I think one of these figures... What was this one? I think they. I think they. This was a story they put in with the Golden Wonder Crisps uh, from the yeah, these little, little mini comics. Yeah, no, this one. This this was used as a model for a uh, like a little pewter uh, uh, f uh, uh, figure you get of like of Cyberman being converted. Uh, they just totally totally ripped it off. But yeah, good good for them. Uh, yeah, ni nice little uh, uh, you know ending. Uh, the new mont, but uh, uh, again, they just forgot like the the a very very ma uh, major plot point. And here they're saying Frobisher is stuck in the in the in the um, shape shape of a penguin. That happens every now and again. Uh, Nature of the Beast again, good little story, good little drawing of Perry. Yeah, I mean like uh, uh, yeah, Nick uh, uh, John Ridgeway kind of nailing Nicola Bryant. As I kind of wish I was. Um, so it's yeah, it's a nice little story. It's about. Uh, 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 like a sci-fi sword and sorcery thing of a a, a, a wolf person that's like uh, terrorizing again, like uh, like knights of the round table with laser pistols, that sort of thing. Uh, nice little little use of uh, Letratone. Oh, I'm feeling, feeling so ages over here there for as he remembers uh, 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 Peter Davison's Doctor. Um, uh, you know, and they do do, do investigate. They get uh, you know nice cliffhangers. Look at this full page page cliffhangers. This is what we. This is really what you want. This is again. This is why John Ridgeway, I think, is is a real master of of the craft, right? Uh, uh, and you know, so the Doctor work works through this this mystery again. You get Knights of the Round Table and uh, sci fi stuff together. Works lovely. Works out, and it work, works in Doctor Who. Doctor Who is a very very mutable concept. Right, and you could do a, you could basically change any genre with it. And I, re I realized this the other day. As long as you keep the Doctor, uh, firstly recognizable from the TV, uh, and also you've got to keep the Doctor authoritative and anti-authoritarian. Right, <laughs> when you do that, you can put him in any setting, which I think this book book really kind of, kind of uh, tells. So there's a bit of like circular storytelling when, when, when you find out what. Uh, uh, yeah, what's what, what's really going on? What this beast is? That's uh, uh, but look at this! I love this. Uh, I bet that wasn't scripted. That Frobisher be, be, being hung upside down. I like freaking love that. Love it. Uh, oh, I just made it much bigger. How do I how do I make that smaller again? Hang on, I got again the little whizzy wheel, and it's uh, go down. Uh, 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 uh. There you go. And I'm back. And I'm back. But there you go. I do like I did like the Frobisher hanging upside down. Um, good story, good good ending of uh, and good good ending to the story. Again, uh, a nice kind of little circular sto uh, storytelling uh, and and a good epilogue, right? I think it actually says epilogue on it. Uh, this next story, time bomb, really clever. Pl it plays very very nicely with the idea of of time travel. Okay, make this better again. Yeah, that's better. Uh, so you have this mysterious ship. 
uh, that's like go, that, that keeps recurring through the story, and they're just like 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 hanging out in the TARDIS. So it's all like whoa again. Uh, this is before you know you had like Photoshop to work out how to do this stuff for you, right? So this was all done by 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 hand. This thing invading the TARDIS. It's excellent artwork. Uh, and again, look at this. I, I, it, you know, yeah, I, that he did this by hand is really, really, really clever. I'm not, I, I, uh, and I think just is is a testament to his um, craftsmanship, which is which he really has to be good. But again, look at the uh, 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 like character posing there. It, this is just perfect. This is just absolutely perfect. Did they write out Perry by then? I can't remember. Um, so yeah, like like the you know the story go, goes on. They they they're trying to work out what are these things that that are being that invade invade the TARDIS. And there's some um, ecological time travel sto uh, story going on that's causing massive disasters, which they don't r uh, really know about, creating the, the, this alternate Earth where dinosaurs uh, <laughs> you know evolved and, be and became the dominant form of life. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, uh, oh well, this kind of just reminds me of uh, of this little sequence. Really reminds me of Frank Frank Bellamy, which I think. Uh, look at this with that with that sound effect. It really looks like that. That's what uh, uh, John Ridgway is is uh, is, is trying. It's kind of feeling. Got so got Frobisher chasing a fish, and he's being being caught by a bigger fish. But that line work is very Frank Bellamy like, while remaining. Very, you know, or, you know, very natural to uh, uh, John, 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 John Ridgeway. Um, so this, you know, story progresses again. Fabulous art throughout, uh, and, and it's a timey wimey time traveling story uh, that that uh, that holds your interest and, and is uh, uh, and is enjoyable, right? Is enjoyable with with good artwork. What more can you ask for? I don't know why. Oh yeah, because uh, like he dropped Perry off, so now he, he he at the end he arrives at Yankee Stadium, baseball stadium to, to pick her up. You just see her in the background. I, I think you know the right. It, it was all very eclectic writing teams. Uh, uh, they were just doing everything. So now Sally, Sally, they're into the uh, um, the mind wall pet Perry outfit. We we with the uh, uh, you know the 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 glory days of. Uh, where was it again? <laughs> we go back. The glory days of the Avengers and Varys uh, Perry. Uh, it was a little bit tighter there. <laughs> Are over. And we're in, in, uh, into salad days. Where is it? Salad days. Uh, this one's a bit of a whimsy, uh, uh, British whimsy plot. It's uh, uh, Perry wants a doctor to, to, eat, to eat more salads and get sucked into Alice in Wonderland. Um, I, honestly, I liked it. It's a fun little story. It's a silly story. I think I think it's a one part one, right? It's just it's kind of, it's kind of a filler. Um, okay, again, obviously it's from photo reference, but wow, totally nails uh, Colin Baker. It totally nails the character or call it Colin Baker's doctor. Uh, changes. Oh, changes is a crazy one. This is a, is it? This is not the. Uh, let's see who wrote this one again. This wasn't the. Grant Morrison one, Simon Furman, or oh, changes was um... oh it's Grant Morrison okay and it does it, it does it very much tell <laughs> I love the Frobisher interview. One sec, let's go back to changes uh, down down a lot more pages. Uh, nearly there, nearly there. Salad days. I'm going past salad days. Uh, yeah, changes. So this is kind of like a little. Surreal story. Uh, there's actually another one like this with Sylvester uh, McCoy's Doctor, where weird things go on in the TARDIS, right? Basically, it's the Doctor, Perry, Frobisher in the TARDIS with weird things going on within. I love the um, uh, uh, John Ridgeway's representation of the TARDIS, uh, like that she goes through the store and suddenly she's out, like, you know, in the Genesis planet. It's really cool. Um, but again, it's, this is this is very 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 much uh, is it Grant Grant Morrison, uh, great great shape shifting bad alien. Is this? I think this is a, like like a two parter. But again, very very surreal, uh, very very tar oh, God, it's Tardis design. Oh, it's gorgeous, freaking gorgeous Tardis library. And I, I, other times, like oh yeah, he'll be walking through the Tardis and he'll see like his old costumes here, yeah. uh, just on display. <laughs> 
<laughs> Maybe they, they went to Cardiff and now they're in the, oh yeah, also, yeah they go to the, the secondary control room. So you've got this, this, this uh, shape-changing alien, uh, which, which uh, Frobisher then is able to be able to shape-change again and, and take on. Prophets of Doom is a, uh, I would say, a, a more uh, comedic story about, uh, uh, you know, inter, you know, inter, you know it, intergalactic capitalists, like massive intergalactic capitalists. Uh, but again, see, this is just like the, the drone uh, design. This is all 80s uh, um, John Ridgway design. It's just the stuff I love, right? It, it's, uh, it actually gets, a, it, it carries on in the Sylvester McCoy years. I do like the way, again, this is very Fra Frank Bellamy-esque, which is, you see how he doesn't use his lines to, to create lines. There's, there's, he creates like, um, like shadows. Uh, yeah, like negatives. It, it, yes, again, okay, look at that, Gordon Baker, again. <laughs> this, was, this was him when he could just like spit these out really like, oh, if only the, only the TARDIS console was that good in real life. Um, so yeah, so you have these like, like, like the, these evil slug-like aliens that that are big in big into money that the that the doctor ends up having to take on, uh, and uh, uh, you know they they, they end up finding. Is this the one? I think they got uh, they have like a dollar sign head. Yeah, their uh, their flags are dollar signs. They just take lots of prisoners and to uh, they're big big into the, the slave trade. Here, this is the um, uh, uh, I, I, yeah, I love the the the, the thing they got from so he can't change. Uh, so they're talking for him. They uh, said, "Oh, they're probably." Uh, Perry's like, "What? You know, what do you think they're going to do with us, Frobisher? Where, uh, and where's the doctor? Oh, probably planning something for uh, clever to get us out of here. Hope it doesn't take too long." But a lot I re again, I haven't read this for twenty years. So I remember this so clearly. Well, Captain Yestrad, uh, that's what I call uh, uh, call efficient motor force time period allocation. A prime by by Pedler femoid. Uh, with a clear 98% marketing certainty for a handmaiden in the uh, uh, grotto morphs of uh, Sibelia Del Delta. Yeah, uh, basically they're going to they're, they're going to sell Perry as a uh, uh, you know a uh, <laughs> I, 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 you know, I, a a sex slave. I think I think that's basically. Yeah, they, I'll try to think of another word to say again. No, that's basically that's basically what it is. And the high percent uh, percentile. Well, there's a high percent. Yeah, basically they're saying, look, we're going to get a ton of money for it. <laughs> and yes, yes, you would. The, the bidding, the bidding would be high on this one, right? The bidding would would indeed be be uh, uh, very high. Um, good little story. Carries on, plods on, uh, yeah, plods on nicely. Again, I I hadn't really saw this before, but I think he's really riffing on like old school Frank Hampton, that sort of that sort of thing here with it with it, with these with these panel designs. Uh, so yeah, again, story, you know, story, uh, story goes on. Doctor wins in the end. Doctor wins. Uh, now onto gift. Gift is a great story. It's a great story uh, again because Perry's in a bikini in this one, which uh, uh, for me, for me, is 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 all I really need to know, right? The gift. But it, but it is a, it is a, it is a fun story. The Doctor and Perry are uh, um, va uh, was it vacationing? I do remember this is one they bring in a different artist as a backup artist, and it really, oh. Didn't really work, it, you know. Did, I th but they made him the main artist for a while. So they uh, again, this is another like timing. But here, look at this. this is the only thing. He, that, this only play lets you get this. It, it feels like Colin Baker's Doctor, uh, uh, but you would never see this, in, you know, in real life. So it's like a uh, a gangstery type planet that gets invaded by these uh, these uh, pyramid dr uh, dr uh, drone shaped things. That cause trouble, right? That's essentially the pro. That's yeah, you know, essentially the story. So then you go back and you find out exactly what you know what happened, where they came from. Well written story, by the way. Well written story that uh, um, builds up the character. Like I do like the sequence where the Doctor goes to the moon that these uh, um, the, the, these drones have come from, and he traces their entire lineage over hundreds of years. Like, so you first get this crash spaceship, you have a, a repair drone comes out, uh, and then over time they like they they build others, they build more, and they then make it this huge society in which they then invade uh, uh, the nineteen thirties gangster world from. Right, and you get Frobisher with the Tommy gun. Love it, love it. Um, uh, and and again, the Doctor has to work out a way. Of yeah, of of saving the day, uh, and, and I do I do like the like the 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 uh, the junk world kind kind of thing that they uh, uh, that they 
I, I was going to say, John Ridgway's realisation of it, like of, of this junk bowl. So this is the one. So over here, I think, is this one where they had Tim Perkins? Uh, Tim Perkins did the inks, but I really think that... Uh, uh, and I remember I met him at a convention. I'm going, oh, man, it was so bad because uh, it really, really hurt. The, yeah, it wasn't as good when Tim Perkins did, did, did the inks. Uh, and I saw my commission and said, oh, man, your stuff, it killed it. It was so good. And then you came in. It was terrible. Um, but, uh, yeah, look, John Ridgway is try trying to teach him here. This one isn't so bad. He's in it a little bit more later, and it's uh, not not so great. I guess Frobisher can, can shape, shape change again now. He goes goes backwards and forwards, right? He goes back, uh, backwards and forwards from it. And finally, we get to the World Shapers, an all-time classic, probably the one of the greatest Doctor Who comics of all time. So we start off, the, it's again, Grant Morrison script. Fantastic script. Starts off um, Dr. Perry and Frobisher. Great TARDIS team, by the way. Give me a, Fro a Frobisher action figure. Dr. Perry, they, they arrive on this world uh, I think, do they know it's Marinus at the time? I think they, yeah, they know, they know it's Ma Marinus. Uh, and it's all, like, destroyed, and there's a little flashback to the, uh, 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 the Ford. And then they encounter this, and it's like, oh, it's just a TARDIS. Look at that TARDIS design, right? TARDIS design is fantastic, and there's a dying Time Lord that, like, uh, decays before them. Uh, that's there, and it's like, Planet 14 is his last, li you know, last line. Uh, and they they have to try and work out what's going on. Again, look at this TARDIS design. It's even better on the inside. It's bigger on the inside, babe. But yeah, great TARDIS design. Very, very crystalline. I guess that's kind of what they wanted to do with, with Jodie Whittaker's TARDIS. Uh, uh, but it's not quite as good. It didn't really work as well. Uh, and so they notice that time's gone uh, haywire. Hair, the pair's hair's growing. Frobisher's molting. And something's wrong with time. Time is being accelerated and they're being stalked by... Well, it looks like they're Vord, right? You know, you've got a Vord hand. But you also, yeah, you've got two Vord hands. What's going on? He's being stalked by them. I'm going to spoil this, by the way. Because <laughs> it's like, what, about 30 years old? Probably more. Um, so then, you know, you, you, uh, they, they realize they've got to go to find Jamie. Uh, 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 Tim Perkins coming back in. Oh, man. Not as good. Not as good. So they, they, they realize they've got to go and get Jamie because they, they know it's like to a Planet 14, which was mentioned in the Invasion. Uh, and Jamie's old. Like, is this old Jamie? Uh, uh, and he's, he's lived a horrible life and everybody thought he was crazy. It's just miserable, right? He's just left this miserable, miserable life of everybody thinking he's a lying, crazy man. Old, uh, old crazy Jamie. Uh, uh, so the Doctor takes him to go on, you know, on this adventure to, to, uh, together. Um, I, 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 wonder, I wonder how this would tie into... This must be before the two Doctors? No, this was after they, they, they referenced it. So they go back there and they find uh, Marinus has the seas have dried up and time's moved on. Right? Time's been uh, moved on, a, a, you know, a, you know was a great distance. And you get, it's like, I saw this last panel, I'm like, oh, what's going on? They look a bit Cyberman-ish, right? They look a bit Cyberman-ish. And that's basically the idea. The Vord are using some kind of, like, time accelerator to evolve themselves and they're evolving into cybermen and it's really clever i just love that uh so jamie and the doctor go on what go on it was a mission together to destroy them uh oh let's look at this frame where, where they, uh, jamie heroically plunges his, his, his claymore um for the clam Kuriman! yeah right right into the time disruptor thing and dies horribly right there uh okay, look at this this Time vortex will behind the doctor. Oh, it's glorious. It's glorious. I just wish people cared the same level as they care back then. Uh, uh, and look at the storytelling. It's absolute way where he's like tries to like you know uh, uh, you know outrun the t the the time wave. It's wonderful, wonderful storytelling. Uh, uh, visual storytelling, and then wonderful scripted storytelling as he as he meet, meets up with some time lords, and they say, "Well, he's still young. He's still young, right? He's still young." And then um, uh, I think that's it. Yeah, no, there's no there's no like uh, uh, big big making of in this one, but it's just it's glory. It, this is prime 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 Doctor Who comics. Perhaps uh, perhaps the strongest collection they have, right? Uh, I, I'm kind of looking forward to going over the first uh, Sylvester McCoy one, which I guess I'm going to do. Uh, I might read it tonight. Might read it tomorrow. I, you know, this has just got me in the mood for it. But again, I love revisiting this. 
Uh, uh, yeah, Doctor Who comics are pretty much over. You know, there, there aren't any Doctor Who comics anymore, but there's so much good Doctor Who comics. This one is one I really strongly recommend you check out. Uh, you can get it on Amazon. It is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. My name's Taylor Beckin, the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe. And ring the little bell. Ring the little bell so you are notified when new videos drop. Yeah!